because he promised me a new life. I'm blessed because he wants me, and he tells me wherever I go. And if you happen to ask me how I am, my friend, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. One of the curses of having that up there. <laughs> I was reading the first slide. So, uh, let's sing this next song, We Shall See the King. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready? Should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, we shall see the King, we shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. The kingdom of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the King when he comes. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when he comes. He's coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. You ready? Savior call today. Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in power, we'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. How many's looking forward to that day when we see the King? Amen. 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 Let's sing this next song, He is Lord, before Brother Chris comes for prayer. Yeah. 
risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing it again tonight. See, Lord, of your heart tonight. Those are coming today when Satan himself is going to have to bow down and confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. He's Lord above everything tonight, isn't he? Amen. Amen. We're going to go to him in prayer because we believe he still hears and answers prayer. If you have a need tonight, just slip up your hand signifying I need God to do something tonight. How many knows tonight he's able to do whatever we need him to do? Amen. Amen. Help me pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord God, because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, you change not. You've not lost any power nor authority. God, what you did yesterday, you can do it again today. And Father, we pray right now for every hand, God, that was lifted all across this building tonight. God, those that need a physical touch in their bodies, I pray right now, God, that you'd reach down and touch them, Father. God, those that are facing procedures, God, those that are facing surgeries, I pray, God, for you to guide those surgeons' hands, Father, and I pray, God, for speedy recoveries. Father, I pray for those, God, that are recovering tonight, God, that you give them strength and health back into their bodies. God, I pray right now, God, that you do the miraculous. Let the doctors be amazed of what God can do, Father. I pray right now, God, that you'd meet every need. God, those that may have a financial need tonight, God, meet that need for them. God, open that door. Open the windows of heaven, and God, pour out a blessing they cannot contain. God, those that are fighting in their spirit tonight, God, give them strength and power and victory over their enemy tonight, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Father, give us faith, give us courage, and God, let us stand on your word tonight. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's sing this chorus. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. Sing it again. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to Sing it again tonight. Let him renew your strength here tonight. How many knows he's here on Wednesday just like Sunday? You need strength tonight? Raise your hands. Let God renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, one more time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. Lord, 
How many knows God's time is perfect? Amen. He's never early. He's never late. He's always right on time. Amen. When we have to wait, how many knows He's going to show up right on time? Amen. Even though we may not like to wait, He knows when He needs to be there. And Amen. He'll never be late tonight. Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. going to ask the ushers to come receive the evening offering and tithes. If you have to give tonight, you give to the Lord and He'll bless you for your giving. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this opportunity and privilege, Lord, that we have to be able to give unto You. Father, I pray You bless every gift, bless those that have to give tonight, and bless those that may not, Father, that they be able to the next time. Father, we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Take none from the journey land. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. No pilgrims in Christ's journey round. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
You're going to attract people. You're going to win people to Christ. That's it. You see, God does nothing out of balance. Not even in it. Now, uh, they're divided up into three groups. I want you to understand that seven of the gifts of the Spirit were in the Old Testament. Were used in the Old Testament. And, uh, and then two gifts of the Spirit were only for the New Testament church. Okay? Now, you have people, people think that they can just fall into these things spiritually. You don't do that. You don't work into them. The Bible goes back and says, if the Holy Spirit divides severally as He will. If the Holy Spirit doesn't give you that gift, then you don't have it. The Holy Spirit is the one that fills you with the Holy Ghost. He's the one that gives you, if you have the gift of healing. He's the one that gives you the gift of faith. He's the one that gives you this and that. You can't work. Nothing in the Bible uh, well I don't want to say nothing done by works but the Bible says this show me your works and I'll show you my faith. Show me your faith and I'll show you my work. And my question is this about myself. How many people have I won to the Lord? That's my question about myself. It bothers me that I haven't won a lot of people to the Lord. I just have it. But as I go along in life, I try to work at it, do better. Now, everybody doesn't get saved in church. They get saved everywhere. Okay? I've seen them saved on the streets. I've seen them saved in their garages. I've seen them saved on the farm. I've seen them saved everywhere. But these... The, the gifts of the Spirit are divided into groups, okay? And uh, if you will, go with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, all right? Now, here people come to church and say, God gave me a revelation. Do you realize that if God gives you a revelation, that's next, that's next to the inspired Word of God? If God gives you a revelation, it's not a joking matter. It is a serious matter. And I've seen so many people, well, God gave me a revelation. Yeah, but what if God give you a revelation you're getting ready to go through tribulation? You see, God's given us a revelation in the Bible that the world's going to go through tribulation. Now, some think the church is going to go through tribulation. I know several people that believe that. Go ahead, I'll leave you the key to the church. I'm getting out of here. Uh, that is a false doctrine and a false prophecy. And it's a hindrance to the church more than it's a help to the church. And, uh, you know, I've thought about our church a lot. You can't serve God in this church. You probably can't serve God in any church. Because if you don't think enough of your home church to protect it and love it, which I think everybody here loves their church, and we love our pastors and everything else, and I'm pretty sure we love each other. But if you don't have love, the gifts of the Spirit cannot operate in the body of Christ. All right? The reason I, I, I feel good about my family is because I know my mother and dad loved me. And my brothers and sisters loved me. The reason I feel about good about a church is because people love each other. And... Uh, if a people, if, if a church that does not love people does not attract people, you 
got to be loving. And uh, now, what about these churches today that are that uh, do not believe in the blood of Jesus Christ? They do not believe that you can you have to be born again. They believe you can go to heaven by works. Uh, they they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Now, we tend, and this is the biggest fallacy I see, we tend to judge churches by crowds. Now, we are inundated with Hollywood religion. I hear people talk about some things, But if you'll read your Bible and read the book of Revelation, Revelation describes the Laodicean church. And a lot of these churches, somebody said, don't make a judgment. Let me tell you something, church. If you're not wise enough to make a good spiritual judgment, then how are you going to make it happen? Because you have to use spiritual judgment to make it to heaven. I know we got the phrase in our society today, don't judge. And don't do this because you offend me. That's baloney. Okay? Uh, we call it politically correct. What has politically correct vocabulary done for America? Ask yourself that question. That's what you got to ask yourself. What has it done for your own spiritual life? And everything like that. And I understand being respectful toward race and toward each other, and that we should be. But when the government starts trying to trying to dictate spiritual rule to you, you might as well you 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 might as well look that the next thing they're headed for is this. Well, so God gave the, the church the, the gifts of the Spirit, and and. Uh, the ones that were used in the Old Testament was the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. That's one category. Those are known or revelation are known as revelation gifts. In other words, God reveals to you something. It is not the gift of suspicion. Okay? It, God has a revelation for you personally or about something or about it. You know, I've been in times uh, uh, one night I was in a dilemma in one of my churches I pastored and a church mother come to me before church and uh, I was going to, uh, to exercise my pastoral authority I thought and uh, let me tell you something. When you try to exercise authority over somebody else in the church, you, you better know where you're standing. Because, because you see, we, 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 we talk about blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Okay? Those are people that act under the covenant of God. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. Now, say what you will, but I believe the world is full of wolves in sheep's clothing. All right? It's not popular to say, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Now, these were the gifts that were used in the Old Testament. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, faith, miracles, healings, and prophecy. Those were used in the Old Testament. The two gifts of the Spirit that were used in the New Testament was different kinds of tongues or divers' tongues and interpretation of tongues. So what God was doing was He was completing Himself to be active in the body of Christ. All right? Now, I, I, I had a sister... She was the best tither any pastor could have. But you'd see her at church maybe every six months. 
And she firmly believed that, that because she tithed, she was all right. You don't do anything by works. I told her, I said, you're not going to heaven because you tithe. You're going to heaven because you've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. So then, wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits are revelation gifts. Okay? And uh, have you ever discerned somebody's spirit? Okay? Now the Bible says this, that one of the safety guards of Christianity is our spirit bears witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God. And if my spirit doesn't bear witness with your spirit, either my spirit's wrong or your spirit's wrong, or we're both wrong. Or one of us is right and the other's wrong. But the Bible says there is a witness. Now, in certain churches, when the preacher's preaching, the preacher will say, Somebody give me a witness. And the whole church would jump up and say, Yes, amen, that's it, brother. That's a witness. And we are to be witnesses to each other of God. So now, the next three are gifts of power. Church can't operate without the power of the Holy Ghost. No way. No way. We can't operate without the power of God in our homes. We can't operate without the power of God in our families. We can't operate without the power of God being with us on our jobs. But some of us are like this. Okay? I used to pray when I wouldn't study. Take a test in school. And I pray, God, help me pass this test. Now, I didn't give God anything to work with. I didn't. I did. And uh, uh, how could I pass the test unless a divine revelation come to me? And that was highly unlikely. So everything is according to what thus saith the Word of God. All right? Now, the other three are, are gifts of power, and it's faith, miracles, and healing. Now, why some people do not get healed, I do not know. Just like I do not know why some people don't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost or struggle and struggle and struggle for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to do that. that that's, that's not the Bible's pattern. And uh, you, 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 Now, when I got saved, I saved at the age of 10, and, and I wanted the Holy Ghost so bad, I went two years. And every time the altars was open, I hit the altar praying for the Holy Ghost. Okay? Finally, at the end of two years, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Went home speaking in my tongues, speaking in tongues, and Dad said, call a psychiatrist and let's get him there tomorrow because our boy's gone crazy. There is no time limit. And, and just because you don't speak in tongues doesn't mean you're less spiritual than somebody else. You see, we have spiritual categories we put people in. We pigeonhole them. And some of them, you know, God is more merciful than we are. Somebody said, oh, that ain't true. Well, uh, I got a, a book I'm reading called Some People Are Safe and Some People Are Not Safe. And that's why my father used to say, be careful who you allow to influence your life. One of the greatest things we can do is learn to think for ourselves. Okay? Think for ourselves. If you're... Eh, 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 now, use other people's thinking and get wisdom and get knowledge and get understanding. But think for yourself. You see, I firmly believe one of the problems in the United States is we've got 500 people in Congress thinking for the other 95% of the nation. That's my personal opinion. It's not worth anything. Chunk it out. It is worth something. Pray about it. Not worth anything. That's not worth anything. But one of the problems we're having, we're having in our public schools, 
we have uh, uh, kids that cannot read cursive. Do you, do you understand we're in the 20th century and they said we have kids that cannot read cursive? And now Sheila Clinker is putting a law in to the, uh, to, for, the, uh, for the house down in Indianapolis that we need to put a law in that teachers teach cursive. Okay? And I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And then we sent out graduation cards to some kids. Okay? And uh, we wrote them in cursive. And I saw those kids later on, and I said, because I was always making some kind of funny statement to the kids, and I, 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 I sent it to the kids, and I said, how'd you like what I said? Brother Branham, I couldn't read what you said because I don't read to cursive. We got a problem. We got a problem. So, when God brings things together, he, he, he can't erase every problem, but we've got to cooperate with God. So you have faith, miracles, and healing that are gifts of power. And then you have your gifts of inspiration or interpretation. And they are prophecy, different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now the only two that was added to the gifts of the Spirit was tongues and interpretation of tongues given to the New Testament church. Uh, I think that's, that's one of God's way. The scripture says that tongues were given for, for the unbeliever. Okay? And then Paul said, be careful about tongues because uh, unless someone comes in and uh, they don't understand what you're talking about. Well, you've got to look at the history of what Paul was, where Paul was raised. Down the street from the Corinthian church was the temple of the goddess Diana. Okay? And they believed in chanting. All right? They believed in chanting. And then one would interpret the chanting of the other one in the goddess of the temple. Well, these people come over into the church. Okay? And they held on to their chanting. But then Paul says, let everything be done in decency and order. It's not to be like that. You see, the devil has a uh, copycat of everything that God has. Okay? There it is. Now, the other question is, how can people live like they do and call themselves Christians? How can preachers preach in the pulpit and live like they do? Let me tell you something. The gifts of the Spirit are not to sanctify you. The blood of Jesus Christ sanctifies you. The gifts of the Spirit are not to make you more holy than somebody else. They are help you to understand God's holiness. Now God said this. He said, you be holy, for I'm holy. And he said this also. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Now, I know we come up in Pentecost, and, buddy, we were the ones that put holiness on the map. All right? And I know a lot of things for this and that, but I'm glad. When I was in college, we couldn't wear short pants. We had to wear sweatpants as basketball uniforms because of holiness. It didn't hurt me, you know, and everything like that. But we... We concentrate it on the, on the wrong things sometimes. So when the gifts of the Spirit took place, and then there was ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, okay? Those are ministry gifts. Those are gifts that are not given to everybody. To those gifts, you've got to be called of God. If you're not called of God, don't get in the ministry. Okay? God didn't call you and you know it in your heart. The origin and source of these, all these gifts are given by the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go on. The Holy Spirit bestows these gifts on, whoso, on whom He so ever wills. 
One of you might have the gift of healing. One of you might have the gift of tongues and interpretation. One of you might have the, the gift of miracles. One of you might have a gift of prophesying. And that is, but Paul comes back and he says, let all of these things be done in the church. Now, if my, when, when I pastored, if my church didn't speak in tongues, I got worried. Okay? It's just me. I got worried. I got concerned because I went six months in my church without tongues and interpretation one time, and it scared me to death. All right? But 1 Corinthians 4.1, now, it says seek the greatest gift. What's the best gift? If you don't have this gift, you might as well forget about operating in anything else or doing anything else for God. The greatest gift is love. All right? It takes a pure heart and a pure mind and a pure spirit to function in the power of Christ. Now, we all have difficulty with that. It says, love your neighbors as you love yourselves. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, brother. I love myself. Somebody said, yeah, you're conceited. I know that and all that. But the two things that are most important is love, respect, and honor. Those are the three things. If we don't honor our pastor, why, why is he going to lead us? We must give him the right, and we must honor him as our pastor, okay, and everything. Now, words of wisdom, all right? Words of wisdom will give you a deeper insight into God's Word. It will give you a deeper insight for counseling and for talking to other people. It will. Now, remember what the Scripture says. Word must be in season and out of season. The Bible told preachers, always be ready. Be in season, instant in season and out of season. Now, if you blast somebody in your church congregation that's called to preach, or whatever. And uh, who are you to be the standard of measurement for somebody that's called to preach? Okay? Let me tell you something. This is my standard of measurement. This is it. And in the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit bring standards to the church. And when God specifically reveals His purpose to an individual, He gives direction with it. All right? So if God don't give you direction, Jesus could have never went to the cross without the direction of His Heavenly Father. Paul could have never went to Macedonia without the direction of the Holy Ghost. And you can't live the fullness of the Christian life without God constantly talking to you, speaking to you, and leading you. You ever get dry in your spiritual life? I've been so dry, man, I look for a watering hole. But be beware of this, that the Bible is greatest for your spiritual life. Okay? And my brother that passed away, he had favorite scripture he quote all the time. He's the only one he knew in the Bible. He had a hard time reading. My brother did. He struggled all the time with his reading. And he said it was hard for him. Well, I don't I don't know. Uh, uh, my dad didn't like to go to church because my dad couldn't read. Okay? And so when in in oh in old Pentecostal times, remember how everybody read a verse? Okay, well, my dad got thoroughly embarrassed because he couldn't read a verse. He tried, but he couldn't. And so it, 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 he went to church, but not as regular as he should, and it was because of that. Was because of, there are some weaknesses, folks, that we carry that God understands. God knows who we are, where we are, what we're doing. 
Now, here, here, here's something to think about. The Bible says, He that addeth to this word or take away from this word, so shall his name be taken out of the Lamb's book of life. Okay? Now, that, that's tough. Because you see, let's look at, some, let, let's look at the Mormons. Okay? Look at them. Uh, they say an angel appeared to Joseph Smith. All said, if any other gospels preach to you, that of an angel, let him be accursed. Joseph Smith wrote a Bible, wrote a, the Book of Mormon, which is supposed to be complementary to the Bible. There's nothing that anyone can write that's complementary to the Bible. Bible complements itself. The Bible, you don't have to defend the Bible. The Bible will defend itself. And the strength of the Spirit and the gift of wisdom gives you that ability. All right? And, and look at, at Proverbs chapter, chapter 1. We're looking at just wisdom here. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. He's talking about the word of God. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man shall hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. But to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Look at what he says here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, the word of wisdom, God gave a gift for the church, the word of wisdom. Uh, and Proverbs tells you a lot about wisdom. Now, you'll see people make choices. And, and here's what they do. They don't make wise choices. They make a, another choice that, that wasn't wise. So wisdom is to help you make the right choices. Then your knowledge. Uh, uh, how, how, I, I don't even know a thimbleful about God. I don't. I have a, I have a good knowledge of, of what I think. But how much knowledge do I actually have of God? I don't have a thimbleful and everything like that. So knowledge is a, is a companion gift to the word of wisdom. If, if you know to, you have a choice, which choice is the wisest choice for you? Then you seek counsel then don't do it just because somebody said it. Do it because you, you know that it's the wisest thing for you to do. All right? I know it, it's like this guy I know, know is in my church. He wanted a motor home. He couldn't afford a motor home if he'd, had, if he'd been working 20 years. He went out and bought a motor home. I mean, bought a motorhome and said, I'm going traveling. Well, he traveled five days, called me later. Can you send me some money to buy gas for my motorhome so I can get back? It wasn't a wise choice, all right? I like Cadillacs, but you notice I ain't got one. Now, Sister Stephanie's got one. That's because she's smarter than I am, everything. But a wise choice, okay? And uh, uh, 
A wise choice has a lot to do. We can have knowledge of, of good and bad, but do you have wisdom? You have the wisdom, choose the good. All right? There's some places I, I just wouldn't want to be in. Now, I know how, but when I make the choice, and I don't make the choice about the gift that God gives me for the Holy Spirit. Okay. But He does say to you, seek the best gift. So we know if we seek love and we love God, then God's going to do everything right. He always does everything right. It's never God's fault. I had a pastor, his church burnt one time. His wife come to me and said, we didn't deserve this. Why did God do this to us? How many of you have been in those situations? You feel like you've been treated unfairly by God. God never makes a mistake. God's wisdom is unsearchable, un oh, expanding. There might be a lot of things that you've wrestled with and encountered, but don't blame them on God. All right? Yes. Okay. He's a man of me, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, blame it on God. It's God's fault. It's not God's fault that you went out drinking and got in a wreck. It's not God's fault that you got hit by a drunkard and you didn't have a thing to do with it. You see, the Bible says, in this world we suffer the just with the unjust. I don't like that part. God, I don't deserve that part. But I'm here with a bunch of evil people. And, and, and we, you, you know, we, we, sometimes we just don't think, you know. And the, the, the word of knowledge is supernatural. And I tell you, one of the best ways to get knowledge through the scriptures, study it, read it. Okay. Then the other way is to, uh, it comes by uh, revelation and everything and all of that. And uh, the word of knowledge is, is supernatural revelation to help you get through things in life. I'll give you an illustration. When I was teaching in Bible college over there in Caribbean Pentecostal College. Uh, my wife and I got $800 a month. And I never consider any place I've been in the ministry a sacrifice for God. I don't consider it a sacrifice. It's a privilege. A privilege that God put me in the place to do those things. God allowed me. So, uh, I want to tell you about what my wife and I done, but I want to tell you what the kids done. We ran out of food halfway through the month. I mean, we did not have any food to feed the kids. And one of the students come to me and said, God revealed to me that He's going to send us food. Let's pray. Let's have a prayer meeting. Well, I looked at that young student and I said, yeah, here we go again. But you see, the real test of faith is when you get where the fire is going to burn you. That's the real test of faith. The test of faith comes when you're in a rock and a hard spot. The test of faith comes when you're in the den of lions like Daniel. The test of faith comes when you're facing the cross like Jesus when the real tests come, you know. And tests of faith come if you believe him or a Cadillac, all right? My faith ain't working. <laughs> but so this young lady come to me, and when she did, it rang a bell in my heart. Boom. Oh, it's good to hear that sound. <laughs> <laughs> and and she said, Brother Branham, God spoke to me and spoke to some of the kids, and he said he's going to give us enough food 
to make it to the end of the month. We had 28 kids or 30 kids in that college. Five o'clock that afternoon, around us were farmers. Five o'clock that afternoon, here come through the gates of that college every farmer around us. They had goats on their necks. They had cabbage. They had asparagus. Oh, Lord, forgive me. But I'd have ate them. But that day, that very day after we got together, and I don't think I had that much to do with it. God had it all done. And He filled our building and our kitchen with food to last two more weeks. You see, that's where faith faith really comes in. Talk about the gift of faith, okay? The gift of faith really shows up to me when you are put to the press. The pressure is on. This and that, all right? So, in it, it, the existence of, of, of uh, natural things is overtaken by spiritual things, and God performs the miracles. The knowledge of some events are given by the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Bible says, when he says our spirit bears witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God, what happens when the church worships together, they're, they're witnessing to each other, and they're witnessing the Spirit of God. Now, would you rather have a half a glass full or a full glass? That's what it boils down to. You want a full glass, all right? But the truth is, we don't always carry a full glass of faith. I don't. I don't know about you, you know. Uh, the only time I really challenged my faith was when I was younger and I'd let my car go to empty until I just had to go on. My father-in-law used to say, why don't you fill your tank up? Well, he filled it up for me. <laughs> but the gifts of the Spirit are the fact that, like this, when you revealed something, it's, a lot of times it's to correct your spiritual life or improve your spiritual life. I'm going to give you an illustration. Jesus come to the well and the Samaritan woman was there. And he asked her, said, uh, give me a drink of water. And so things got quiet, I think what happened and uh, Jesus said uh, go get your husband I love this it's against shacking up but anyway that's what, the, that's what we call it <laughs> but uh, it's not popular today it's alright you know just go ahead and live like that if you want to uh, and, and Jesus said uh, go get your husband and she said, uh, I have no husband. Well, she was right. She didn't have a husband. And she didn't lie. Okay? But she just wasn't telling the truth. It's what we call little white lies. Okay? And then Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, Thou hast no husband. I agree with you. But I'm going to tell you something else that the that, that God revealed to me about you. You have five husbands. Lord, in me, she's on merry-go-round. Hallelujah. You have five husbands, and, and the man that you're with now is not your husband. Oh! Did Jesus condemn her anymore? No. He didn't run her down. He didn't mock her. He didn't make fun of her. She got so blessed, she didn't even need six husbands. All right? And then she run into town, and she told everybody, 
come on down to the well. I want to show you a man that said everything about me. He must be the Messiah. Well, he was the Messiah. And you see, when God tells you something about yourself, and, and you know it's true, she, she, she knew she was walking on edge of the cliff. <laughs> but Jesus did it because he loved her. In his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding and seeing the way the Holy Spirit led him. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit because he said, anything that I do, I do nothing without my Father. And sometimes we try to do things without God. Everything like that. But, so it's time to close. All right. Uh, reason, I, I think the reason the Lord does a lot of things is because you, I, I understand that the Lord knows all things. There's not anything in my life hid from Him. And there's not anything in my life hid from you. Okay? But the Lord, He said, there's, there's no other God and, and everything like that. So Jesus functioned in these first three just as well as we would function in them. And it took the Holy Spirit to lead and guide Jesus and show Him things just like it does us today. Somebody told me while I was gone, <clears throat> after we saw the bear, they said, Boy, Brother Brandon, aren't you glad that bear went the other way? Why, sure. Anybody in his normal mind did. But one thing I know this, I don't know what could have happened or what might have happened or all that, you know. I know I, I, I didn't want to meet up with Grizzly Adams, that's for sure. And, and, but, but God keeps his hand on us through the word of knowledge, through the word of wisdom, and through faith. Now, there are, to me, there are degrees of faith. Some people have more faith than other people. You know, and some people, they just can't get above it. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not the judge. But here's what the Lord said. He said, as your faith is, so be it unto you. I think about that. Where I'm at in my spiritual life, I'm, I'm at the place of my spiritual life because as my faith has been in my spiritual life, so be it unto me. That's where I'm at today. And that's where I'll be at as long as I work. It. But you grow in grace. And in the Lord. You know, uh, everything doesn't come easy in the Christian life. That's why Jesus said, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Okay? So that, that's, that, that's what the... But the, but the Holy Ghost, uh, it, it's amazing to me what God does. Amazing. It's amazing and everything. People say, I can't do this or I can't do that. Folks, don't you believe it for one moment. Because you can do what God puts in your heart. And God will not fail you. You may hit some bumps. You may go through rough times. Whatever. But hang in there. Hang in there. It's like I told my wife one time. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to leave you. She said, good. Let me know when you're going to go. And I said, oh. She said, because I'm going to pack my clothes and go with you. The thing that I feared has come upon me. It was nice to know. It was scary to know. But isn't it good to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Isn't it good to know that your children are saved and that your family's saved and on the way to heaven? Isn't it good to know that you still got to work on something to get them saved? 
Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll let our pastor come and dismiss us. Praise the Lord. You want me to do it? Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the divine power of your word. You said, greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. We see, Lord, the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Guide us, instruct us, and use us. But let us lift up our heads and look toward the hills from whence cometh our help. For our help comes of the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. All right.